Hello, my name is Amelia Reed Garapoli, and I'm here to demonstrate my power plying article for you where I show describe the method continuous plying. Now I have my bobbins on my lazy kate, and I put my lazy kate as far away from me as I can. I'm only going to be doing a two ply. I just happen to have three bobbins. You do want your yarn, your singles, to be rested. These have, were spun a couple of weeks ago. I like to let my bobbins rest at least two days, so a weekend or a week or two if I can. So I'll go on and do other spinning and then come back and do my plying later. Now, that said, something very interesting happens to yarn as it sits on your bobbin. I fold it over this end when the bobbin was freshly spun. So that shows me what the balanced two ply yarn needs to look like. Now, look what happens if I fold over the next length of yarn on that bobbin you can see it has a lot less twist. So what if you forgot to fold over an end? How are you going to know what balance needs to look like? Well, what you can do is cut off a sample. And I'm just going to fold over the next length because I don't want any twist escaping. What's left of it, right? Now, the twist that appears to have left is actually asleep. So I put a knot in the end and I put this length in warm water. The warm water wakes up the dormant twist. This is one reason why we wet finish our skeins. Okay. Squeeze the water out. And now you can see my freshly made sample, which is this one, has the same amount of twist as the one that I applied back on itself when things were freshly spun. So I can use this to compare to as I'm spinning to make sure I have a balanced two ply yarn. If I wanted a three ply, I would put three strands together and so forth. Now, let's talk about continuous plying. In order to do continuous plying, you have to be continually moving your yarn toward the wheel, right? So we can't start and stop, which is what some of the other forms of plying have us do. So the first step, pretty easy, you might wanna put your body sort of sideways to your wheel. You want to clap so that one hand is always moving toward your wheel. Everybody knows how to clap, right? Good job. <laughs> so the second part is you have to always be pushing yarn toward the wheel. So you want to pinch with one hand, the hand that's moving toward the wheel, and not pinch with the other hand. So the pinching hand is moving toward the wheel. When we add the yarn to this, the other hand is typically smoothing things out. So it's not completely wide open the way I have mine completely wide open right now. It's more like just closed fingers, but I want you to see pretty obviously which hand is pinching. So I'm making really obvious motions right now. Okay. So practice that for a minute. <laughs> and once you feel like you have that down, you can add yarn to the mix. Now, you want to make sure your wheel is going counterclockwise or the opposite direction from what you spun your singles in. You wanna make sure your brake tension is set for plying, right? Typically that's maybe a little bit stronger than you had it set for your singles. You could let the yarn tell you what it needs and adjust your brake tension as you get things underway. And you're probably going to find you need to increase your speed. So I'm gonna start with my speed down from where I know I need it so that I can show you how to do that analysis. And my leader is a big loop. Okay. It's just twirled up on itself because I've used this leader a few times. So my leader's ready. So now I get the yarn from my bobbins. This is the gray one. I'm gonna straighten out that folded over end. And then my other one starts out yellow, but it looks like it's going to change color. It had a folded over end and I straightened that out as well. Now, to start with, what I'm going to do is pull the two strands through the loop and then wrap them around and put them through the loop again and fold them back on themselves. Now, the reason why I start this way is because at the end, I can take all the twist out of the beginning, open them up and simply slide the leader off. Easy peasy, no scissors involved. I like things that don't involve scissors. <laughs> So we'll start it again. I have my two strands held together. There's 
No twisting of them back here at all. They're two separate strands. I bring them through the loop and then wrap them around and put them through the loop again, holding them together and then folding them back on each other. And it's fine if they want to self-ply at this point, but there's again, no twist back here. So I'm going to start with my hands together, my samples on my leg, and I'm going to be moving my forward hand toward the wheel and my backward hand is going to be coming back. And its job as it comes back is to straighten out the yarn. So you do have to have enough tension on your wheel that it can make that sliding motion um, and not have the yarn be sagging, not have um, the yarn be, um, let's see the thing that can go wrong, not have the yarn be sort of tugging itself, you know, tugging yarn out of the wheel type of deal. So we'll go ahead and get started. I will move my ring where you can see the hill building up. There we go. So I let the twist come in. And now how do you know how much twist is enough twist? Well, that's why we have that sample. And it looks like I have my tension set a little bit low. You see it's sort of sagging there. And what I do is I look and I see how much twist there is when my hands are at their together point. Now, because I stopped my wheel, more twist came in because it has a slow stop feature. So I know what it looked like. So I'm just gonna back off until I get to that point, which is about there. And I take it and I compare it to my sample. And that looks pretty good for the twist angle matching. Now I need to roll that forward a little bit. <laughs> and my tension was a little bit light. So I'm just gonna increase my tension a little bit. That's this knob right here. And on the mini spinner, it's a, it's a um, clockwise motion to tighten it, okay? So hands together. That's much better. You see, it's not sagging between my hands now. So my tension is set well. Now, I would like to move my hands faster than this. <laughs> this is really slow, but this is how slow I have to move so that when my hand gets to the midpoint, there is the right amount of twist in my singles. Okay. Now you may notice as you move your singles toward the wheel, yes, there's more twist coming in. And when you release for this hand to do the pushing, um, the twist jumps over that long length as well. So in fact, you're moving your yarn continuously toward the wheel. It will have little hills and valleys of plying twist. This is one reason why we do skein up our yarns and wet finish them. In addition to waking up dormant twist, it lets the regular twist distribute itself over the skein, okay? Now, the other thing about this form of plying, my hands are moving pretty slowly, so I wanna go faster, but you do also want to stop fairly regularly and move your slider. All right, I already have a bit of a mountain building up, so I'll move it back here. Um, and now I'm ready to go again, and I wanted to speed things up a little bit. So I'll turn my speed dial faster by about an hour because it felt like my hands were moving pretty slow. I always think of that dial as sort of an hour hand on a clock. No, there, oh good, now things are going much faster <laughs> and I can move at a much more comfortable clip doesn't feel like my hands are almost standing still anymore. In fact, I could go faster than this if I wanted to, but while I'm talking to you, I don't really want to. <laughs> so you see my hands are continuously moving toward the mini spinner. If I want to stop and check, I'll stop it here and extra twist is building up. So I remember what it looked like. Oh, I've got a thick spot there. So I will Keep going to let that distribute twist till it looks like it looked. And I can see I actually got it a little bit under applied. So my hands are moving a little bit quick. So let that twist build up a little bit. See if I can get back past that thick spot. And there you go. That's looking much better now. So just remember, move that slider, unless you're on a woolly winder. <laughs> and that is continuous flying. I hope you enjoyed my article. I will look for questions on the YouTube video. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much.